they bite? They're wild animals, yeah. Can I really wiggle it like it was alive? It doesn't look good at all. They're just swamped. Yeah, I'd say it's gonna be really scary. Pick some up. <laughs> Let them go. Can you just tell me what's going on? <laughs> I wish I knew, honey. <laughs> Last time on Eyewitness. We've come to the Marine Mammal Center in San Francisco during what's turning out to be their busiest season ever. El Nino is causing huge numbers of animals to come in and threatens to overwhelm the vets and volunteers. We've actually taken in, I think, somewhere in the neighborhood of 600 animals since November. Manuel rescued an elephant seal who looked near death. Fortunately, he was in time, and the animal will be all right. His name is Winner. He's Winter. gonna come through. Okay, good. Kelly had to deal with someone with good intentions yes. doing the wrong thing. They have it in a what? They have it in a bag? Marty operated on Rocky for an infection, one of the many problems they're having with the harbor seals. Oh, that's good. Everyone's hard at work, but strangely calm. You very busy today? This is everything happening all the time. Yeah. Because the center is unique in its approach to rehabilitation of animals, it's a great place for visiting vets and vet students to Number, learn. Uh, 65. Just watch your feet, because sometimes they, um, sure. they'll come at your feet. I think I prefer to. Trina's waited years to come all the way from Denmark to study under Marty and Francis at the center. Watch your fingers. I didn't know exactly how she held that mouth open. How do you do it? I mean, at the gap in the mouth, yeah, you just put your finger here yeah. and you slip your finger into the gap so they can't close. So you're using your finger like a little bite bar. So, how long will you be here? One month. That's great. Yeah. Have you been to the States before? Never. <laughs> no, I just came because of the seals. There aren't too many places that, uh, that do marine mammal medicine, so if you're interested in that kind of thing or have that kind of background. Um, when the opportunity comes up, you race for it. Just because we see so many animals and, and uh, we do so much. Charlie the sea otter pup is one of the rarities that Trina would never get to study anywhere else. Usually about five shrimp, two or three squid, and then a handful of clams. Three shrimp? Five, no, oh wait, five, five shrimp, and then three squid, yes. and a handful of clams. Okay. That should be enough. And don't forget to peel the shrimp. <laughs> I, uh, th five shrimps mm -hmm. and three... Squid. Squid. The long things with the little legs yeah. on them. <laughs> so is Marty trying to... He seems like he spends a lot of time... Teaching? Sort of teaching people here. Yeah, he's really good. He's really good. They both are. I don't know the answer. Either basophilic granulocytic leukemia, which I'm kind of hoping that's now. While Trina's at the center to get hands-on experience treating animals, Jen, another vet student, is here to do research. We don't have, but if we did have, um, that would be hyper. We've been looking for somebody to really take time to dissect out a harbor seal and look for this herpes virus that we've been finding. But to do that, it takes about you know, three or four hours to dissect every little part of the harbor seal out. So that's what Jennifer did when she came here. And then she worked in the lab with Don King yeah, yeah. at Davis. Between herself and Don King and myself, we can know a little bit more about the herpes virus. Marty just told me that Charlie had a procedure done on him a little while ago, and apparently he uh, popped open his sutures, so they have to take him down to the hospital again and do a little more work on him. Doctor, we have your patients. <laughs> you know, at this, this, this stage of the game, this stage of my career, um, I just like the clinical medicine, so it's looking at animals, trying to figure out what's wrong with them, trying to figure out how to figure out what's wrong with them, and then doing what's necessary. 
and pitch them at this. Maybe it's the language place. barrier, but Trina doesn't seem so on the ball. They have to walk her through everything, and hopefully by observing and assisting Marty and Francis, she'll catch on by the time she leaves. How's your patient, Doctor? Uh, so far, so good. Um, we placed the sutures a little more um, tighter than previously. The trick is that you want it tight enough so that the rectum doesn't prolapse, but at the same time you want it to be able to defecate, of course. <laughs> okay, oh, Charlie says he's getting out of here. While Trina was helping Marty and Francis with Charlie, I took a ride up to UC Davis with Jen. Does this go for credit? <coughs> Nothing. Nothing. This goes because I have this amazing interest in what they're doing. Right. And they're willing to you know, let me come out and help. And like, when do you ever get the opportunity to work with Marie Malmes? Veterinary school is great, but there's a lot of things you don't learn. Like, you don't get to run PCR, and you, you know, you, you don't get to find out how people discover, you know, how to treat diseases. And you just kind of prescribe. But you never get to know, you know, this is the, you know, this is the virus, and this is how we found out what the virus looks like, and this is how we found out how to treat it, and, you know, this is how we found out we can't treat it. And that's just what we're doing by dropping Jen's samples off with Don King, a marine virologist, who's trying to figure out this herpes dilemma. We're at the complete other end from the animals. We don't see the animals on a day-to-day -day basis. From our point of view, we're interested, we use the center as, a, as an ideal way to get hold of samples, because it's, it's an excellent place, and without the center, we wouldn't be able to get the, the sample quality, which we need to do the tests and to, just to discover the things that we can have. Now that Jen's given the samples in for testing, there's a long wait for answers about what exactly this virus is and what, if anything, they can do to stop it. Meanwhile, the animals keep dying. This is going downhill. The infection rate is rising in the harbor seals. No one knows exactly why or how to stop it. We got an emergency. operation and it looks like Rocky's doing pretty well so maybe Rocky will be one of the harbor seal success stories I hope so it's easy to see why people get so attached to the harbor seals they're so cute and plump but they're also very delicate an animal like Rocky that appears healthy can suddenly go critical in a very small fish for Rocky. Yeah. Uh, we got an emergency here. <laughs> so now we wait. I can't help wanting to offer Rocky a few words of encouragement really breaking my heart. Um, he's looking at me with his big eyes and shaking and oh I hope he lives. Joan is a vet tech which is sort of like a nurse. So she checks with Francis on sensitive cases like Rocky. They, um, can I give him a little bit of time maybe to calm him down? He's hypoglycemic so I don't know if anytime you've ever been there's been a day where you haven't eaten or if your blood glucose has dropped, you'll notice that you're dizzy and you're uncoordinated. Mm -hmm. Well, he's gone through an episode where he's been come unconscious from the hypoglycemia and he's sort of resolving it. Alright, sweetie pie, this is a really short line and I understand that. Why are you gonna get him having food? Well, so that he can have some food in his stomach so he can start digesting it. Once he digests it, he'll have glucose in his bloodstream. After they've finished tubing him, all they can do is wait to see if he'll come around. 
Unfortunately, every day a harbor seal is coming down with a serious infection, and until answers come from Don King and other researchers, they don't know how to stop it. It's about 50% of the harbor seals that have died here um, have had herpes virus inclusions in the adrenal glands. You know, the question is, do these animals, do, do harbor seals all have herpes virus, and it's only when they come into rehabilitation, into a stressful situation that the virus flares up, and then that kills them through adrenal necrosis. Or um, do they get it here? Does one animal come in with it? And because you have all these animals in very close contact, is it spreading throughout the center? Uh, and then also, is it, um, is it actually the primary cause of death? Are any of them doing very well? I'm never going to say harbor seal is doing really well until about the day before it's released. Um, I'm just really cautious with them. They, they seem to do really well. Um, and then and then they'll just crash on us. Shortly after they tubed Rocky, he vomited up the food. Joan fears he may be too far gone. Right now his eyes are fixed, his pupils are fixed and dilated, and he's pale. He's just going downhill. He's gonna he's not gonna make it on his own. So it's time. Okay. They've tried everything they can and Rocky's not responding. Francis has decided that he's not going to come back and that the best thing to do is to put him to sleep. I can't believe that they have to deal with such sad things every day. This is sort of a surprise. Because as far as I knew, he was doing fine. It was sort of a bummer. Yeah. <laughs> a big bummer. <laughs> There are now over a hundred mouths to feed. There aren't enough hands to deal with the number of animals coming in, and there's a real need for new volunteers. The day crews are, are struggling to keep up with the work. They do more feeds than the night crews do, and they have less people. It's a long, hard day. One of the things that I learned that surprised me is that these animals actually have to be taught how to eat fish. When they come here, they've been eating fish, or are they just too sick to have been eating, maybe? Well, different animals come in for different reasons. Like a lot of the animals that came on in the earlier part of the year, they were black coats. So they've never seen a fish. I mean, they still should have been with their mother. They were only like two weeks old, some of them. The guys that we're working with probably have never eaten in the wild. Deb and Jane are doing what they spend a lot of their time doing, trying to get the seal to understand that fish is food. Good. Jane has been volunteering at the center for over 18 years. In that time, she's developed a very zen-like approach to teaching these seals to willingly accept fish. It's trying to get them to eat fish without um, restraints and without forcing them so that it allows them to make the choice. The moment has passed. Can I really wiggle it like it was alive? It's very good. Is this the first time he's eaten? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Let me get some more fish. Fish truck's here. <laughs> You're just commenting how many strong looking people you have on your crew. Looking? So that's, see, that's the key trick word there. Looking. Oh, strong looking. Out. It's tough to get people to volunteer during the day when most people work Monday through Friday. Weekends don't have such a hard time, but the day crews are, are struggling to keep up with the work. They do more feeds than the night crews do and they have less people. It's a long, hard day. LZ has been a volunteer supervisor for years at the center. The past few weeks have been an incredible strain on her Friday day crew. She and the other supervisors are finding it impossible to keep up with the work. I went to a volunteer orientation in downtown Sausalito, where she is desperately trying to get more people to come in to help. So, you're all like, can I go now? Can I join now? Right? 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 Everybody wants to go today? Join today? There's a couple things I want to add to what we just talked about. Um, this is the largest marine mammal center in the world, in the whole world. Anything that happens, happens here first.
So it's a very exciting place to be. It's also one of the dirtiest, smelliest, heaviest, longest, hardest, most miserable days I work in a week. And it's the best thing I do. It's, it's absolutely the best thing I do my whole life. This has got to be tough on LZ. It was a poor turnout to begin with. I should be lucky if someone actually comes in to help. This summer, it's come down to the longtime volunteers like Kelly. I don't think he'll be getting all shrimp tomorrow because once he starts eating them, he doesn't eat anything else. So, how come he was allowed today? I think because of his surgery. No more. Kelly's great. She supervises a night crew, attends to Charlie several days a week, and she treats children as a pediatric nurse. <laughs> he gets his paddle feet going when he's grooming his I'm tail. amazed she sleeps oh, or has a personal life at all. I mean, I just love doing this, and I've always loved volunteering. And when I started working here, I just would come on Wednesday nights, and then all these little things started creeping up. I see my husband for like four or five hours in the evening, and he just got so irritated <laughs> with me. He's just like, I just think you're spending too much time at the Bamble Center. And it's true, I mean, it is a commitment, but it's also what you make it. And I think that what we're doing here is really important work. But I mean, chances to do something like this with this guy, mm -hmm. I mean, you just can't pass that up. It's just, I mean, we may never get another router again, mm -hmm. you know? A strange new illness is causing adult sea lions to come in seizuring, something that not only threatens to push the center over the top, but might affect all ocean life. Do you think it's some kind of toxic poison? I think it's, it's almost definitely a toxin of some type. Tracy Tom said there was something going on with an elephant seal. Some strange behavior or oh, something. Oh, um, actually, it's a, what, another female sea lion. Um, it's the same behavior that we've been seeing all week. We're just hoping to catch it on tape so that we could have something to look at, you know, later on to compare to. Um, I don't know if you've been around here the last couple of days. We've had a, um, probably about five female sea lions coming up from the San Francisco area all showing um, similar neurological signs and most of them were euthanized. We still have one alive right now um, and on necropsy we're finding that their hearts all look really strange but we're not finding a lot of other stuff. The starving pups were bad enough but now with these adult sea lions coming and seizuring and most of them dying, it's a different story. The way Marty explains it, because the marine mammals are at the top of the food chain, this illness might be an indication of something seriously affecting the entire ocean environment. Um, Trina, what are you doing? Is that a seizure sea lion that you have there? This is a slow one. She's doing full talks and ECD and everything for me. Okay. Are these the sea lions that came up last night? Yeah. I guess there are three all told that were seizuring. And, uh... What, what, what causes these seizures? That's the question. Oh, that is the question. Yeah, okay. that's the big question. So now we have several sea lions from this general area that are um, seizuring, so it looks like um, it's some kind of, um, well, the little bells start ringing us in some kind of outbreak of something. Marty and Francis don't seem to be sure exactly what it is that's wrong with them, and so they're scrambling to try to take care of the animals, give them drugs, get samples from them, and uh, try to keep them alive. They were in the full tank, stiff body. Is your day off, Francis? <laughs> yes, today's my day off. <laughs> Tara. I'm just trying to find out what's happening with these animals. And also, because everyone's so busy, it's going to give me a time to just go through all the records and see exactly what's happening. Marty's conducting some tests on the sea lion to see if he can figure out why this and some of the other sea lions have been having seizures. Is this one going to be tricky because the animal's so big? Yeah, I'd say it's going to be really scary. And guess who gets to do the head? Me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have these big females that are coming up from south of us, uh, all exhibiting the same signs. 
what I'd like to do with her is actually treat her for, for a pox, possible toxin, um, starting her on, uh, on antibiotics to cover, um, but also try and get some better samples from a live animal so that we can get a better idea as to what's going on, because she's, I think, number five or even six that has come up with the same sort of signs. When we first showed up, it seemed like they had their hands full, but now there's so many animals, they're really in the weeds. Our problem right now is that we have two super cool minus 80 freezers yeah. and they're both full. Oh. And so as it's Memorial Day weekend, mm -hmm. we thought we'd shift some of the stuff that's in that freezer up to David. This is a huge problem and there's not much time. They're sending samples from the seizuring sea lions to researchers all over the country. For the second time in a week, Jen and I are going up to Davis to bring samples to Don King so that he and his colleagues can start to hunt for answers. They're still wrestling with a possible herpes epidemic, and now we're bringing them another deadlier mystery. It's day two now of whatever it is that's going on, and the number of seizuring sea lions is increasing dramatically. It looks like the outbreak they fear is happening. I'm gonna start taking blood. We got eight more of these sea lions in last night. I think it's some kind of toxic poison. I think it's it's almost definitely a toxin of some type. You're um you're doing I'm the tubing. tubing. She's helping me. While Great. Francis gets samples from the dead, Marty oh, organizes the, the crews to deal with the um, living. Suck it out so can get anything. Um, if you can't, just pour in water, then suck it out, and then shut up. Especially, I've had it with you. You're fine. What happened to her? The faces she's making. I know. It's strange. Uh, it know, sounds like something big is happening and there's definitely a lot of activity. <laughs> but I can't tell from everyone's behavior because Marty's just as mellow and Francis's demeanor has remained unflinching. I mean, we're up to 38 adult seizure animals right now. So In, uh, That are on their way and, yeah, and here? Yeah, yeah. And then apart from that, we have our other 110 animals on site anyway, our pups and our starving sea lions. So one of the problems we face right now is trying to we're keeping these, these animals on a separate water system mm -hmm. in case there's a toxin in their feces that might um, poison the other guys. But we're getting full. We're getting really full. Next time on Eyewitness, Francis tries to handle the casualties at the center. Tom goes with Marty down to San Luis Obispo where the seizuring sea lions are stranding in huge numbers. Look, another good example of marine mammals is sentinels of the environment. Estimated time of departure anyway. With animals being rescued up and down the coast, Brian and Kathy have to arrange all of their transportation up to the center. I don't think I have anybody here who can drive them up to Sausalito. 